Yo, what is good, yo? It's your boy Ty back here with another video. And in this video today, we are going to be ranking the top 10 centers in NBA 2K21, my team. Now, disclaimer before we get started is that this center position is absolutely stacked. To kind of put things in perspective for each and every one of you guys, Julius Randle, Dirk, Jokic, they didn't even make the list. That's how good this center position truly is. Now, before we dive in to each and every one of these cards, if you are new to my channel and have not yet, please consider smashing that subscribe button as we are getting closer to that 60,000 uh, kind of goal that I do have. If we could hit that by the you know start of May, that would be absolutely ridiculous. Again, truly can't thank each and every one of you guys enough. Starting my list off at number 10 is Galaxy Opal West Unsub. I know a lot of car, a lot of people would have Jokic, Dirk, those types of people ahead of West Unsub, but I personally love West Unsub. I really do. I'm biased towards West Unsub. If you do run West Unsub, I would definitely run him at that power forward position, but he is 6'7 with his 6'10 wingspan. Hot spots from everywhere. 29 Hall of Famers, 35 on gold, 93 three ball, 95 driving dunk, 92 speed ball, 86 bonus, 93 speed acceleration, as well as a 92 lateral quickness. What gets kind of lost within this, good vertical, good good strength. I heard a lot of people would be like, oh, West doesn't grab rebounds. Okay, guys, I, I, I don't know all, all, all those specifics, but what I can say is stat-wise, he is so, so complete. Comes with that Hall of Fame Showtime range that are catch you hot start corner specials. Has every shooting badge outside of Deadeye that you could want on next gen. Obviously, you're going to want to put blinders on him. Playmaker wise, Hall of Fame Unpluckable, Quick First Step, Dimer, Downhill. Defensively, Hall of Fame Clamps, Intimidator, Post Stick, Rebound Chaser, Tyler's Defender, Brick Wall, like a yeah, worm. Like, he's got it all. I've heard a lot of people, somebody even asked me, Ty, do I need to grind, let's say, Paul Millsap to replace West? Ty, do I grind for Mel Daniels to replace West? <laughs> Absolutely not. Wes Unseld is incredible. Great tendencies through and through. Kobe's release on quick for Unseld. I don't mind it. For a lot of people, it's not incredible. But for Unseld, I don't know what it is about the card. Maybe it's the upper. I absolutely like his release. Pro 2 size escape. Pro 5 move on the back. There's a lot to like about Wes Unseld. The only downside is the fact that he's only 6'7". Coming in at number nine for me is Domination Reward Mel Daniels. Now, for me, I probably am better with Wes Unseld, but that doesn't mean on both current gen and next gen that he's better than Mel Daniels. I would be lying to sit here and tell you that. 6'9", 7'11", wingspan for Mel. The one thing that hurts him are the no hot spots from above the break. 43 out of the famers, 19 on gold, 93 ball, 90 driving dunk, 95 speed ball, 86 bono, 96 speed acceleration. So it was at 94 lateral quickness. Comes with the Hall of Fame Showtime. Does have Hall of Fame Ranger Center, Hot Star, Catch and Shoot. Like I said, next gen, he does get that Hall of Fame Blinders badge, which is very, very solid. Public wise, Hall of Fame Quick First Step Tie Handles, Unpluckable. Does come with gold handles for days. Defensively, this is where Mel Daniels is absolutely incredible. Remember the wingspan we talked about? Just look at all of the defensive badges. I'm not going to go through them all. You guys can see them. Basically has everything you could possibly want. Again, 6'9", 220 pounds. So when we get to the SIGs and he has Pro 3, you know, he's going to be able to move a little bit, obviously. Does have the 100 driving dunk tendency, decent enough defensive tendencies. Again, jump shot 81. It's a decent release. I like it a lot more on LaMelo Ball uh, than Mel Daniels, to be honest with you. Uh, it is on quick, which, I mean, again, I don't mind the release. I, I just wouldn't say I love it. Pro 3 size of escape, Pro 4 moving dribble 6. Honestly, you're not going to want to dribble too much with Mel on offense. Hopefully, all he has to do for you is stand in the corner and knock down shots. It absolutely pains me to put him down this far. But coming in at number 8 for me is Glitch Reward Taco Fall. Dark Matter, 7 foot 5, 8 2 wingspan hotspots from that left corner. Nowhere else around the arc. 33 out of the famers with 12 on gold. Again, if you got Taco, you probably want to put a three point shoe on him. But at the same time, you definitely want to put a speed shoe on him. So you, you just got to kind of pick your poison. I'd probably put a speed shoe on him. Speed speed with ball is what I would probably lean to lean towards. Does have a 90 driving dunk tendency. Great interior defender. The big thing that I like about Taco is that you can five out with your center. And with his Hall of Fame showtime and him being seven foot five with the speed glitch, he's going to be nearly impossible to defend. The Hall of Fame hot zone hunter. Uh, obviously, playmaker wise, doesn't come with quick first step, but you can give that to him. Defensively, this is where I really like Taco Fall. 
He remember guys, he is seven foot five. So if you get him that 82 speed, you you know put that speed coach on him in D'Antoni, you're gonna get that up to an 86, which is just ridiculous to think about a seven five center. 8-2 wingspan with 86 speed. Defensive badges literally has it all. Tendency-wise, great tendencies through and through outside of the on-ball steal. Sigs-wise, jump shot 47. Decent release. It's going to be hard to green with Taco because of his low three-ball rating. Dribble six, I would say they don't matter, but it would help if he had, you know, the pro three behind the back, all this stuff. But with the speed glitch in the game, guys, no doubt about it. Taco Fall is one of the cheesiest all-around cards in the game. Coming in one step above Taco is Galaxy Opa Arvidas Sabonis, 7'3", seven 7'6", seven wingspan. So his player model is not quite like Taco, but he's probably the closest guy that kind of feels like Taco, at least on the court to me. Now, there's a big difference in the cards. Obviously, you can see the hot spots for Sabonis, 35 Hall of Famers, 24 on gold, 94 three ball, 80 driving dunk, 83 ball handle. Obviously, the speed with ball is a little bit low. Hence why I say give him the speed Kobe Grin shoe. Because if you do that, I, I would not use Sabonis without this. But if you give him this shoe, which today isn't super, super expensive, you get the ball handle rating up, you get the speed with ball up, you get the speed acceleration. He's looking a lot better. Still, the 80 lateral quickness isn't great on the defensive end. But with his player build, he's not going to be that bad. Badge-wise, does only come with gold. Showtime, wish I was Hall of Fame. But look at the shooting badges. Hall of Fame, range extender, hot zone, hunter, hot start, catch and shoot corner specialist. Has a lot of shooting badges. Playmaker-wise, Hall of Fame, dimer, a great badge to have if you run him as your primary ball handler, which I personally would in a 5-out type setting. Gold, quick first step, and unplugable. Defensively, very, very solid as well. I would say, you know, we're going to talk about his release. Set shot 8 on very quick again isn't a uh, it's not a release i love but it's a tolerable release you know and with his high three ball it's gonna knock down a lot of the open threes anyways tendency wise absolutely incredible and like we said sig wise is similar to taco with the speed glitch in the game does it really truly matter on current gen at least i don't know if it does next gen i mean obviously everything changes with taco and sabonis but on current gen both of those cards are some of the cheesiest cards you're gonna find in 2k I think we're through the cheese ball part of our, the, the cheese ball portion of our list with Sabonis and Taco. Back to the traditional center type player in Jaron Jackson Jr. 6'11", 7'4", wingspan, hotspots from everywhere outside of the top of the key. 30 out of famers, 26 on gold. 93 three ball, 85 driving dunk, 87 speed ball, 86 ball handle, 91 speed acceleration as well as an 88 lateral quidditch. Has everything outside of you guys can see the steel ratings pretty low. And I mean, everything else you guys can see, Jaron Jackson Jr. is very, very solid. What I like his lateral quickness up a, a little bit maybe i mean maybe but we're kind of nitpicking if we if we really you know start talking about those type of details hall of fame showtime range extender catch and shoot corner specialist hot start you guys can see all the gold shooting badges the only one i would really add to him is slippery off one that's not even a shooting badge public wise hall of fame quick first step unpluckable defensively you guys can see what jaron jackson jr can give you tendency wise again very solid similar to everybody on this list in the kind of stage we we're in jump shot 109 on very quick now this is a release that probably splits the community i sometimes am so so green with jaron and then other times i kind of struggle with jaron so it's just kind of one of those releases that really does split the community nonetheless very very solid uh size pro one size of escape again not not anything it's gonna matter considering on current gen at least he's six foot eleven does come with the pro two tween which helps pro four movement by the back is terrible jaron jackson jr guys is a mini d rob who you guys will see on this list Speaking of that mini D Rob, David Robinson coming in at number five on my list. Seven foot one, seven five wingspan, hot spots from everywhere. 35 Hall of Famers, 20 on gold, 93 three ball, 90 driving dunk, 89 speed ball, 86 ball handle, 91 speed acceleration, as well as that 90 lateral quickness. Now, obviously, overall, David Robinson, I think, is a more complete player than a guy like Jaron Jackson Jr. Does have the Hall of Fame Showtime, Catch and Shoot Corner Specialist, no Hall of Fame range, so it's, you know, kind of preference. Obviously, Jaron does have the Hall of Fame range, which I personally love. You look at the playmaking badges, Hall of Fame Quick First Step Unpluckable. Defensive badges for a 7'1 David Robinson, guys. There's nothing more you could truly want. I know a lot of people are not satisfied with David Robinson on the offensive end, or they don't think he rebounds the ball well. But guys, look at his defensive badges. It's absolutely insane. Tendency-wise, incredible. Sigs-wise, Dave Robinson's, re Dave Robinson's release on quick. Now, I'll be the first to say it. I sometimes struggle greening with David Robinson. I really, truly do, but I struggle greening with a lot of people in the game, so that's not really saying much. Pro 3 size of escape, again, not going to matter for David Robinson. Pro 8 tween, pro 6 move by the back. Definitely a lot to like with Galaxy Opal D-Rob. For me, I didn't grind for the card, so maybe some of you guys in the, in, uh, watching this video are higher on him. But for me, David Robinson is just a little bit of an upgraded Jaron Jackson Jr. 
Coming in at number four for me was the guy that is hardest to rank on this list. Remember, this is a primary center position list, and maybe we'll start changing it, like, you know, with a Kevin Durant, who everybody's going to play him at shooting guard. And that's where I'm kind of ranking him at, right? Where is he ranked compared to other these guys? It's just va not value, but how good they are at their certain position. Kevin Durant coming in at number four, 6'10", 7'4", wingspan, hot spots from everywhere, 30 out of famous, 39 on gold, 97, 3 ball, 95 driving dunk, 86 motor, 92 speed, 94 speed accelerations with a 94 lateral quickness. If he had Hall of Fame Showtime, he would be even higher on my list, to be honest with you guys. But the only the gold Showtime definitely hurts him on current gen. Shooting wise, catch and shoot, hot start, range center, flexible. All on Hall of Fame, only gold, high zone, hunter, playmaker wise. Hall of Fame handles for days, quick first step, tie handles, and unpluckable. Defense wise, Hall of Fame claims, hard crusher, intimidator, post with lockdown, rebound, chaser, rim protector, ties, fender, and trapper. So the big thing for this Kevin Durant is notice the kind of interior badges that they put on him compared to, you know, no pick dodger, no interceptor, those types of things. Just kind of intriguing. Obviously, the primary center is one of the reasons for that. So Kevin Durant can guard, you know, the, the, the three, the four, the five. He really can. If you want to play him at center, you can definitely do that as well. 95 driving dunk uh, tendency, defensive tendency, solid through and through. Six wise, Durant release on quick. It used to be one of my favorite releases in the game, to be completely honest with you. Lately, I have been pretty 50 with it. Pro two size of escape. I don't know if on next gen he can do it, but current gen obviously can't, so that doesn't matter. Pro two tween, which is very, very solid. They gotta stop putting the pro four movement on the back on literally everybody. It's hard to rank Kevin Durant, but I think overall on this list, at number four is a great spot for him. Now, I'll be straight up honest with you guys. There's a big gap between number three and number four. There truly is. I can say I would move Kevin Durant up higher, but there's no possible way. We got three guys left. Those three guys, Will, Kareem, and Giannis. It really depends on the day for these cards. Yesterday, I would have told you that Will is better than Kareem. I would have yesterday, but today I, is different. So it just all depends on the day, and it really dep depends on what you need. Some people say Wilt can't run on current gen, <clears throat> DBG, but I think Wilt is fine on current gen. I haven't noticed anything about it. Like Wilt, I have very, very good success with him, more success on the offensive end than Kareem. But let's get right into it. Coming in at number three on my list is God Dark Matter Wilt. Chamberlain, 7'1", 8-foot wingspan, hot spots from everywhere, 44 out of famers, 21 gold, 94 three ball, and that's the thing, I've green pretty consistently with Will, I really do, you don't believe me, hey, just watch, watch some competitive games with me and Will, see what he gets into, 97 driving dunk, 89 speed ball, 86 ball, 95 speed acceleration, as well as at 90 lateral quickness, and look at all the interior stats, finish wise, Hall of Fame showtime, shooting wise, Hall of Fame range extender, catch and shoot, volume shooter, the thing I like about Will, Hall of Fame dimer, so if you do five out with him, off of the Hall of Fame Dimer, you're not going to miss. Hall of Fame Quick First Step, Gold Unplugged One. Then defensively, obviously one of the most complete players in the game. Tendency wise, stellar across the board. Six wise, set shot 17 on very quick. Again, not an ideal release, but you can make it work. Pro 3 moving on the back as well. It pains me to put Will Chamberlain at number three. It just has to be done. Coming in at number two for me is Dark Matter Kareem Abdul Jabbar, 7'2, 7'5 wingspan. Hot spots from both corners, and I think the thing that holds me back with Kareem really is the fact that he doesn't have hot spots from above the break. That's the one thing that's pretty noticeable when you use Kareem. That combined with only an 81 three ball, if you don't have Phil Jackson, it can definitely be tough uh, in certain types of situations, such as if you play, you know, in a competitive type tournament, which I do a lot of, on Hall of Fame difficulty, it can be tough at times. 42 Hall of Famers, 15 on gold. Does come with a 97 driving dunk, 87 speed ball, 83 ball handle. That's easily fixable. 92 speed acceleration as well as a 91 lateral quickness. Hall of Fame Showtime. Obviously, you got to put range, flexible, dead eye, those types of badges on him. Hall of Fame Quick First Step. You guys can see he doesn't come with dimer. Does come with the golden puck with a defensively one of the most complete players in the game. Tendency wise, stellar across the board. Six wise, here's the big thing. His release is so much better than Wilt's. It is so, so much better than Wilt's. So as the Pro 6 movement on the back, which is very, very solid, it pains me. Him and Wilt are basically, the, not, they're not the same player. They bring different stuff, but to separate them, it's almost impossible. Forget Wilt at number three, Kareem at number two. They are tied at number two. You can't sit here and tell me that Kareem is that much better than Wilt outside of player model and release, but Wilt more than makes up with that. Because of a Yiki, he has, he has a good three ball and can actually shoot the ball a little bit better. Coming in as my best center in NBA 2K at 21 is Galaxy Opo Giannis Antetokounmpo. 6'11", 7'4", wingspan, hotspots from everywhere. 
besides the top of the key and right hash, which it's, that's a big deal, but at least he has one from that left hash. 35 Hall of Famers, 31 on gold. And he is kind of that median between a Kareem and between a, a, obviously a Will, right? Will does that 94 three ball hot spots for everywhere. Kareem has 81, no hot spots from above the break. Giannis is an 85 three ball and does come with the one hot spot from above the break. So he's kind of that in the middle type player. Does come with the 98 driving dunk, 95 speed ball, 91 ball handle. 97 speed acceleration as well as a 96 lateral. Quinn is just super complete. Hall of Fame showtime. Gold range center, Hall of Fame catch and shoot, Tyler shooter, volume shooter. Play like wise, Hall of Fame dimer, handles for days, quick first step, tie handles on pluckable you guys can see here just the difference in kind of playmaking between him and Kareem defensively obviously we know what Giannis Antetokounmpo is going to bring tendency wise 100 driving dunk tendency great defensive tendency six wise Giannis release on quick we all know what that brings and here's the deal ultimately what it comes down to is at the power forward position there's nobody outside of Danny Ferry that's even compar comparable to Giannis Antetokounmpo there's just simply not and at the center position, I can't separate Wilt and Kareem. So that is why overall Giannis is my best center in NBA 2K21. All right, that is going to wrap it up for my top 10 center video today. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Comment down below. Do you guys like Wilt more? Do you like Kareem more? Let me know that down below in the comments because I think there's the majority of the community likes Kareem. But I might be on the flip side of that thing. So let me know that down below in the comments, guys. Again, drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys and have a blessed day.